sing to the morning star of grace from the shifting shadows of the earth we will lift our eyes to him where steady arms of mercy reach to gather children in rejoice and a warm welcome to Whitley and Farnley's online service this week. My name is Claire and I'm the vicar here and today you are in for a treat because we are on location and we're starting this morning at Cobden Primary School. Why are we starting Copton Primary School? Well, because the summer holidays are coming to a close. And in a few days, this wonderful place is going to be full with teachers and children. We're filming this just at the end of the last term, so you can hear them now as they're playing in the fields. And I'm sure that all of us, whether we're still at school or whether that was decades ago, still find September a particular moment. It's that moment, isn't it, when the academic year starts again, when everything is fresh and everything is new. And even if we're just going back to our ordinary lives, there is something about September. So this service, we are inviting you to bring your bags. Bring your bags that are just a symbol of your everyday life. And we're going to pray for them as a symbol of inviting God into our everyday lives. Because not only is today the blessing of the bags, but it is also the start of a new series that we've termed Meant to Be. Who does God mean us to be in the week? What do our lives look like 24-7? What does that look like as an individual, as a church, a society, as a nation? What does that look like in our response to things like climate change? And today, we're going to explore the theme of holiness. What does God see as holy? Is it just Sundays that are holy? Or actually, is it the rest of our lives? That however exciting or mundane our jobs are, God wants to be part of it. 
and wants us to make a difference in each part of it. So please do gather with us this morning as we worship the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, who was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be thankful for it. Now, in a moment, we're going to go into our first hymn. But as we do so, as we do every Sunday, may we invite you to write in the comments things that you would like to give thanks for. It's been a long summer holiday. It might be something over the summer. It might be something over last year. It might be something from this morning. It can be something as small as a really good cup of tea. Or it could be something more significant or pro profound or something in the middle. But please do join us as we do this. If this is your first time or your 60th time, be brave and write in the comments something that you would like to give thanks for as we sing together our first hymn.
What a great song that was. It's so good to be able to sing and worship God together. We're reminded when we're thinking about how God is with us in our everyday lives and how everything is holy, that sometimes we don't live a holy life. We're not aware that God is with us. And we call this sin, the ways in which we mess up, the ways in which we do unholy things. And so now in our confession, we come before God and we ask for his forgiveness. We say sorry and we ask for his strength to live a holy, upright and worship filled life. So we say our confession together. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. And so may the God of power and love forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ. Amen. Well, we now come to have our first reading, which is from the first letter, to, first letter written by Peter. Here we go. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Well, I wonder if you have a list of holy jobs, uh, like with the most holy at the top and the least holy job at the bottom. Maybe at the top you have like a missionary and slightly underneath it you have a vicar um, and then underneath that maybe a doctor or a teacher and then underneath that maybe something like a butcher. Um, we're outside Stevenson's Butchers just around the corner. We love, love, love the pork pies from here. Uh, and then it gets lower and lower down and maybe right at the bottom you have um, uh, bankers and lawyers right at the bottom of your list of holy jobs. Or, or maybe um, in your head there are holy places, like right at the front of church by the top altar is a super, super holy place. And then as you get further away from that it gets less holy and maybe uh, the pub is an unholy place. Um, you know, we, ha we have these kind of lists of stuff that's holier and stuff that's less holy. Jobs, places, things we do. Well, I want to tell you this morning that everything is holy. Absolutely everything is holy. There is, as Abraham Kupia, the Dutch Prime Minister one time and theologian said, there is not a square inch of creation over which Christ does not say, mine. Everything in the whole world is holy because God created it and over it he said, good, 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 good. And then he created people and he said, very good. And he didn't just create people, but he gave us a job to do, a job to tend the garden in Eden. Because you see, work also is holy. 
Creation, everything in it is holy and work is holy, which means school is holy, being at home is holy. There is not a list of holy jobs with missionary at the top and banker at the bottom. Every job is holy. Now there probably are some that aren't working in arms manufacturing and things like that. Uh, I'm not going to say they're holy jobs, but all work is holy. The butchers is holy, especially if they make really good pork pies. Teaching is holy. Working as a paramedic is holy. Working in an office is holy because God created it and work is good. There is not a point or place in the whole world that is more or less holy. You were given your job by God for a purpose and for a reason. He wants you there. And so as we come to think about our bags in a moment, your bags are holy because they contain the things with which you do your job, whether that is working in a school or an office, whether that's cleaning or plumbing, or whether that is nappies and wipes to clean up after your kids. That is holy. Work is holy. Everything is holy. Thank you, Chris, for that. And as we consider and reflect upon how every part of our life is holy, every sphere of our work is holy. So now we come together as a community to bring to God those things and people where we need his action, where we need his presence and his companionship, where we need his wisdom and insight. So just take a moment now and have a think, what is on your heart? What is it that you would like to bring to God this morning? We're going to have our prayers led for us this morning. And as that happens, may I invite you once again to write in the comments those things that are on your hearts. It might be a word, a sentence or a paragraph. But let's do that now as we bring our intercessions to God together. O oh God, our creator, whose good earth is entrusted to our care and delight and tenderness, we pray. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. For all who are in captivity to debt, whose lives are cramped by fear, from which there is no turning except through abundant harvest, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. For all who depend on the earth for their daily food and fuel, whose forests are destroyed for the profits of a few, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. For all who labour in poverty, who are oppressed by unjust laws, who are banned for speaking the truth, who long for a harvest of justice, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. For all who are in captivity to greed and waste and boredom, whose harvest joy is choked with things they do not need, may those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Turn us again from our captivity and restore our vision that our mouth may be filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one. Let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, here we are at our moment of the blessing of the bag. So if you've got a bag near you, your, your work bag, your change bag, your school bag, your um, tool kit, whatever, why not grab it um, and uh, hold it with you? We're going to pray a prayer of blessing over them. This doesn't do anything magical. It doesn't make them extra special, but it reminds us that God wants to bless us in our places of work, in how we spend the time in our week. He is with us 24 seven, not just on a Sunday morning when we're tuning in or in the church building, but he is with us constantly and he cares for and wants to bless you in your places of work. So why don't you grab your bag and Claire is going to pray a prayer of blessing over them. So Father, we bring before you as a symbol of our everyday lives, our bags. Lord, we thank you for the year that is ahead. For the year that has gone, Lord, we lay down those things that have troubled us, that have held us back, and we ask for you to move in them. And for the year ahead, Father, may you bless our comings and our goings. May you go before us, behind us, above and below us. May you infuse every part of our lives, that our testimony will be that we are aware of your presence in all that we do. When, the, when we're doing the washing up, when we're changing the beds, when we're looking after children, when we're doing the shopping, when we're at work, when we're dealing with colleagues, when we're dealing with customers, whatever it might be, Lord, may you be present and may we be aware of you with us. We pray that this year in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as always, here are our notices. And I love the notices because it tells us what's going on in the life of the church. Because as we've been thinking about this morning, God isn't just interested in what we do on our Sundays between nine and 11. He cares about how we spend the, our, the time in our weeks, what we're doing. And all this stuff, all our notices are about equipping you to go out into your week, to go and love and serve your colleagues and your neighbor. And so here are the notices. Starting this week on Wednesday, we are beginning our wellness journey course. It's a course over eight weeks exploring eight different topics of wellness, how we can be in ourselves well, exploring mental wellness, physical wellness, spiritual wellness, all that sort of stuff. That'll be happening on Zoom at half past seven on a Wednesday evening. Do check the email which your newsletter came on because the Zoom link will be there or have a chat to Claire and I. Send us a message message on Facebook, send us an email and we would love to send you out the link to the Zoom. Secondly, starting on the 20th of September, which is Monday uh, at 7.20 p.m. and every Monday following that up until the end of November, we are having our live streamed conversations again. We did these when we're in our series on prayer and they were really, really fun. Well, we've got a whole bunch of other people this time to talk about purpose and calling and how God uh, calls us and gives us purpose. And we'll be starting on Monday the 20th at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube after the end of evening prayers, talking to Derek Wormsley, who is the diocesan director of Ordinance and Vocations, and he's written a book called God Calls Everyone. And so we're going to be chatting to him about that. It'll be really interactive. So if you've got any questions for him, then uh, join us at 7.20 on Facebook and YouTube and ask your questions to Derek. Fantastic. On the 17th of October is our Harvest Festival. This is where we gather loads of food, loads of tins, good, etc. And we uh, work out how to give it to those in need, often through the crypt and other projects like that. There'll be a wonderfully big service at both our nine and our half past ten. So if you have got, and online of course as well, we're not stopping our online stuff, but if you want to drop something off in person, then at our nine or half past ten, or get in contact again and we'll make some time available throughout the week so that you can drop your offering off. It'll be loads of fun, lots of laughter, lots of remembering how has God has blessed us. So do join us on the 17th of October. And then thinking a bit further ahead into November, on, uh, on the 14th of November is Remembrance Sunday. And again, all three of our services will be having some form of act of remembrance 
So uh, we'd love to invite you along to that and uh, for you to join us and invite your friends as well, please. Those are all the notices. If you have forgotten any of them, if I've garbled them, uh, then do get in contact and we would love to send you out the newsletter, which is the best way to stay up to date with everything that goes on at St. John's. Sadly, we are coming to the end of our time together this morning, but thank you so much for joining us. We end our service today right on a hilltop, overlooking our wonderful parish and city. And so please, before we go, do let me pray for you, and perhaps we in our hearts could pray for those that we know and love as well, and all those inhabitants of whichever city in the world we live in. For may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself, May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you know and love now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please do join us online next week. We'll be here at 10 o'clock and every evening at 7pm. If we don't see you in the week, do take care 
and stay safe. Say